Hey guys, what's up? This is me, Sean from TetraDotWebs.com. You can come to SMP, and this is a software review of the Motorola HX4G. Um, I'd like to give thanks to Costco Wireless for providing this uh, review unit to, uh, to TetraDotWebs.com. So, uh, first I'll just give you guys a real quick comparison of uh, launching speeds. Um, this is very, very brief. Um, between a single core 1 gigahertz device and a dual core 1 gigahertz device. So you can see we have the settings on both. And I'll just click settings real quick. And let me just show you guys right now. And we'll launch into something like the wireless network. You can see it was clearly faster on the HX4G. So that's our very brief uh, speed comparison. On the HX4G, you have the keyboard. I'll show you guys that real quick. So you can see it comes with a normal Motorola keyboard, which is very nice. Um, and it has multi-touch integration into it. And it's very spacious in the landscape orientation. So you can see, uh, I'll show you some multi-touch by holding down this uh, up button, uppercase button, and you, and you can see you can type letters that are in uppercase. And then you also have speech to text on the bottom, so I'll speak something real quick. So I'll say, this is the Motorola HX4G, and it's using Blingo as a search. Um, so it's a little bit different here. Um, so you can see this is the Motorola anything for you. So very accurate. Um, just a little bit off, and you know, this comes standard on most Android devices. Uh, not the Vlingo itself, though. Uh, it comes with the normal Google um, one. So I'll show you guys Swipe is also included here. And you also have the speech text button. So I'll speak into it. What? Speak. This is the HX4G. So you guys can see right there this. Oops, let me say something more common. Hello, people. Period. I am a human. Period. Not a droid. Period. I mean, I had asked. So you got a little android in there. You see. Hello, people. Period. I am a few minutes. Period. Not it going. Period. So I meant to say, hello, people. I'm a human. Period. Not a droid. Or meaning android. So, um, Blingo appears to be not as great as uh, the Google search, is basically what I was just trying to show you. Uh, so you got Gmail, let me just take this off the screen to make sure I don't really have anything that personal in it. So you can see, we can go to, um, we'll go to Quick, the import content. You can see right there, you get nice email and Gmail, and you get the nice interface of Flip Um you have, the, you have DLNA support, which is something that you also get in the uh, Samsung Galaxy S4G, a la the All Share application. And these are very, um, they're basically the same protocol. So, I'll show you guys a camera interface real quick. This is the front facing camera here. So you switch to. And the uh, front facing camera. I would take myself out of this photo right here so you can see, see my finger there. You can see the refresh rate is pretty good. Yeah, that's so you can see I'm recording a little bit of video. Let me get out of here. There we go. So you got you just got a brief look at the uh, the interface. So you can see the macro mode is very nice on this, and you don't get tapped to focus though. You also get the flash controls. And let me switch the video real quick. Let me show you guys something real quick. And you have every day, so it just uses all the microphones. Outdoor, it tells it that it's going to use a. Uh, it's going to use a noise canceling microphone. And lastly, you have concert, which uses the rear microphone right there to uh, to use for the um, audio. Which is a little bit different from the way it is on, uh, on other devices, like the Motorola Droid X, which has three microphones. I'll show you guys the internet. This is on HMT to HSP Plus speeds. I love tech droids, so if you guys will. Hold one minute. I don't know if you, know, just if it will connect to Wi-Fi. You, know. you have to go in and set it first to connect. 
if I'm not mistaken, these are 21 uh, megabits down. So very, 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 very fast uh, speeds. HSU play, excuse me, HSU PA isn't turned on, sadly, so the upload speeds are pretty bad. Um, but ATT has stated for this device and also the Motorola, or excuse me, the HTC Inspire 4G, they'll it'll soon be able to uh, have the HSU PA. See, multi-touch is very nice. This Tegra 2 processor is very capable of keeping up with my very fast um, ass switching. And this is really something that reviews are very good for, is that you'll be able to see uh, reviewers are just going from app to app, and it'll show you how well the processor is able to keep up with, uh, with the uh, scrolling. I mean, the navigation and the app opening, and how well it's able to multitask those applications. So you can see, HNT's uh, HSPA Plus, speeds aren't half bad um, and it's loaded very very fast uh, especially for it being on a mobile network so real quick let me uh, show you guys a speed test there we go just give you a little quick uh, give you a little sample of how well the network is so we'll begin the test and while I'm doing this um, I also have to say that this is um, running Android 2.2 uh, Froyo. There isn't really a gingerbread update that's really seen in the near future, but assume, or presumably yeah, the gingerbread would come pretty soon. Um, but there's nothing, Motorola hasn't stated that it'd be coming that soon to the device. So you can see that the tests are finished, and I'll just run them one more time. But Motorola has stated that this should get upgraded to a gingerbread. So not it's not that it's not gonna get upgraded, it's just that it's probably not gonna come as fast as something like the Galaxy S 4G. So uh, you can see the upload dilemma, it's very, very, very slow. Um that's like I said because HSUPA is not enabled. Um, hopefully that update that uh, you guys didn't see but came just prior to this prior to me filming this, uh, was hopefully to um, address these HSPA plus speeds. I mean the HSUPA. So I'll just show you guys the results that I've been getting. You can see that the up are pretty bad, but the down are, you know, decent, staying around anywhere from one megabit to three megabits. Um, and you also have the front-facing video camera for video conferencing. I'll show you guys the gal gallery here. Uh, give you guys a little camera roll. Here we go, and you can double tap. I personally don't like the Motorola gallery and you can see that it's very choppy when it comes down to pinch to zoom and navigating and all that other stuff. So I really don't like the uh, don't like the gallery in that case. So real quick I'll just show you guys the difference between the Moto Blur uh, skins on the Motorola Droid X and the Motorola HX 4G. And I'll launch some applications because these are the same exact phone, just different processors. So we'll launch the market. Uh, one's on Verizon and one's on at and as well. So you see I'm launching the market here. Let's see who's going to get it. So the Atrix launched first and it's done first. And Motorola's Droid X is a little bit behind. So I'll launch a website. We'll launch TechDroid um, real quick at the same time. Let me just put my uh, camera down real quick. So that way we can get this queued up on the Droid X. And you can see we have it queued up on both devices. Uh, I have it bookmarked here. Oops. You can see we got it right there. So we'll launch both at the same time, and they're off. Uh, this is Verizon's 3G Oops. versus Motorola's 4G. And they launched both different places on the web page. So I'm going to launch the home screen here on the HX4G. And this is going to end part two. Uh, stay tuned for part three of the uh, review comparison video between the HX4G and the Droid X. So let me just launch them both right before we end this video. And we'll click them at the same time right now. There we go. And I'm going to pause the video and be right back, right before they finish, okay?
so I'll talk to you guys in a later video. Bye.